Good evening. Um, welcome to our Sunday night uh, service. We're going to have communion tonight because it's Easter Sunday. Um, you may well be surprised to see that we are in our church building tonight, and that is uh, a surprise to us as well. Um, I have to say our internet at home has completely gone down, so we haven't got any connection. So we thought we'd come out to the church where the connection is still there. So hopefully if you can see us, uh, please uh, leave your comments and, uh, and greetings and, and likes just to show that somebody is out there watching and the, and the connection is going through. Um, we have to be very thankful that the, the, the technical um, facilities all worked this morning. Uh, we were able to see the uh, messages from around the world. So that was a, that was a blessing and uh, greetings and uh, various different portions. So tonight we're back here and um, this Easter Sunday, uh, praise God, it's good actually to be here. And it is a blessing to be in our church, church building on this Easter Sunday evening, even if uh, it wasn't expected. Um, now if you've just found us, please uh, find us again. You can find us at ggechurch.co.uk and on YouTube as well at um, Greater Grace Evangelical Church and on the GGE uh, Church page on Facebook. So um, that's uh, good ways to keep in touch. It was a blessing to have people out this morning, a few more people. Now you might see that I'm not wearing a face covering. And that's because I'm the only one, apart from my wife, that is in the room, so we don't need to take those precautions tonight. Um, though um, it was good to have more people out this morning, so uh, that was blessed. Um, tonight uh, we're going to look at a few verses. I was ready to preach this morning just in case you're never quite sure whether the technology will work and whether... Um, Everybody will be able to be there, you know, due to illness and shielding and uh, all sorts of things that are that come in place. But uh, thankfully, everything went to plan this morning. So if things are not going to plan this evening, we can't complain. Um, but um, yeah, uh, tonight we're going to have a look at um, the book of Revelation. I know you may say, well, hang on a minute, I was expecting a nice Easter message and I was expecting you to read from uh, Luke or John or one of the other Gospels. And, well, we will in a minute, but to start off tonight, uh, we're going to look at, at Revelation chapter 1. And in verse 13, it says, And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with the garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. His feet like unto fine brass, as they burned in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters and he had in his right hand seven stars and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength and when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive for evermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Wow. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this time to be together um, online. We thank you for those that were able to meet with us in person this morning. We pray that you bless there. We thank for those that were watching online this morning. And we thank you for those that are watching online tonight. It's a blessing. 
uh, to see our, our dear precious friends there and Lord we just pray that you guide now fill us with your life fill us and anoint us Lord we pray with your Holy Spirit now Lord we ask thank you for the day thank you for this Easter thank you for this celebration of our Saviour and our Lord thank you for your name lifted high guide us Lord we pray touch hearts Lord we ask use this time for your purpose for your glory's sake we pray now be with us touch and anoint every utterance we pray with your Holy Spirit we have nothing in ourselves but we have a, a, a risen Saviour we have a mighty God bless us now Lord we pray and speak in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen well tonight yes who is it that's standing there the Alpha and the Omega who is it God the Father the Godhead there's no denying that um, John falls down at his feet as dead um, he receives worship as well this is the living God this is like the ancient of days this is the the one whose whose countenance is powerful and mighty this is the living God I am he that liveth and was dead wow but you know what it can only be Jesus Christ can't it it can't be anyone else God the Father was not dead the Holy Spirit was not dead but the Lord Jesus Christ came to the earth as a man and he was dead so when we look at this picture of the Godhead in Revelation 1 meeting with John the Apostle it's clear who this is it is the Godhead but it is the Lord Jesus Christ and it's a wonderful truth and it's a great thing and I remember uh, a few weeks ago I was able to confound Jehovah's Witness with this very scripture because what, what can they say well who is that well, it's clear that it's God you know in the, the first chapter of Revelation it's very clear that it is the presence of the living God but I am he that liveth and was dead it can only be the Lord Jesus Christ so the Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father are the same one God a trinity uh, it's great it's good news for us because it means that yes Jesus came in obedience and suffered as man and proved that he was he was human because he died but he also proved that he was God because he rose again this is the amazing truth that we see here in in the living God in our in our Savior here in Revelation chapter 1 and it's a great encouragement let's have a look at chapter 24 of Luke as well because we uh, heard um, Pastor Morley this morning he quoted a few verses from there but it's good um, to go and, and read a little bit of that chapter because we haven't really had the opportunity to read the full account this Easter day of, of what happened there but it says now upon the first day of the week very early in the morning they came unto the sepulchre bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them and they found the stone rolled away from the sepulchre and they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus and it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout behold two men stood by them in shining garments and as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth they said unto them why seek ye the living among the dead he is not here but he's risen remember how he spake unto you when 
he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Wow. Yeah, this is it. This is the story of Easter. Yes, I am he that liveth and was dead. Yes, they found not the Lord. There was no one there. The tomb was empty. The Lord Jesus Christ was risen. That's the, the message of Easter. That is the hope that we have today. And I love that, that the angel said, don't you remember he told you this is what would happen? Again, he prophesied it himself, and he was true to his word. And they remembered the words once they heard it. Have we ever done that? We, we, we know a scripture, or we know something from the Bible, and we forget it. And then suddenly something happens, and it's like, yes, now I remember. I remember what God said to me. I remember the promise that I received. Have we ever had that, you know, maybe a promise God gave into our life and then life carries on and we forget it and uh, other things take uh, over, our problems, our, our issues, our, our insecurities, and then suddenly, hey, I remember, I prayed for that. God gave me a promise of that and it's true. And they remembered the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in Galilee and they remembered that he said yes, I need to die, but I will rise on the third day. And that's exactly what they'd seen, and that's exactly what happened. And so they were excited by this. They went from fear, they went from being perplexed, to having great joy, and being excited about what the, the words of the Lord Jesus Christ had, had come true and come to pass. And the, the, the time that they'd had with Jesus, it, it made sense now. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. You know what? Jesus is alive forevermore. Praise the Lord. That's, a, that's great for us. We say hallelujah to that. That, you know, yes, I was dead. But now I'm alive. But not just alive. Not just, oh, look, I'm alive again now. You know, Lazarus did that. Lazarus was raised from the dead. But Lazarus died again. Many people in the, in the scripture maybe were ra ra rose from the dead or were, were, were raised from the dead by God but they were to end up dying a second time. But the Lord Jesus Christ, no. It says, Behold, I am alive forevermore. Why? Because I have defeated death. I've conquered the grave. That's the point. And uh, I was thinking about this. Uh, uh, we won't be so long tonight, but I just want to bring a few thoughts. Um, we have a phrase that we sometimes use, which is running on empty. Have we ever said that? Oh, I'm running on empty. You know, it's usually a bad thing. Um, you know, we, maybe we, we've done this at a time when, they, when the car is going and we're getting to the stage where we, we know we need to fill up with petrol. And we're just about making it to the petrol station because, you know, oh, and the, there's still a tiny little bit of, of fuel in the tank and we have to get there, but it's like, oh, you know, I, I'm sort of running on empty. And uh, we, we know that feeling uh, from going to the, uh, from driving a car and needing to get fuel. But we often use that of ourselves, don't we? Oh, you know, today I'm running on empty. I'm just, I don't, I'm done, I've had enough. I, you know, I'm, I'm ready to give up. I can't go on anymore. You know, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm tired, I'm finished. But you know what, for the believer, nothing is the same as for the world. Uh, for, the, for the Christian, we have a, a different perspective on life. And, Everything is the exact opposite from the world. And for us, you know, running on empty is something we should be doing. You know, the tomb is empty. The tomb is empty today. 
we come to the tomb just like they did like the ladies did uh, on that first Easter morning and they find that it's empty and what do they do they run they run and tell the disciples hey you know what we're running on empty we're running because the tomb is empty and we're running on the power of the empty tomb think about it as well Isaiah chapter 40 we know these verses but it says but they that wait on the Lord will renew their strength and they will mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint and it's like wow how do we do that we had a conference a few weeks ago on, on not fainting uh, faint not and it's like yeah how do we manage that well we, because of because we run on empty we run on the power of the Lord Jesus Christ we run on the power of the, ri the risen Savior and the fact that uh, that uh, um, the the empty tomb gives us the capacity to keep going you think well that's crazy you know how can we run on empty no we do we do because our capacity is the Lord Jesus Christ and our power is the Lord Jesus Christ think about it as well those two on the road to Emmaus what happened it was late at night they were tired they'd had enough they were discouraged but they met Jesus on the way and when they realized when he broke the bread together and tonight we're going to break bread together this Easter time and just remember what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us but as they broke the bread they realized that it was the Lord Jesus Christ who was with them and what happened they got out and they ran all the way back to Jerusalem you're thinking well they turned in for the night they'd had their supper and put their slippers on it was like you know that was it you know so like, oh uh, you know and then they told Jesus oh don't go any further it's far too late to be going out at this time of night what did they do they ran seven miles back to Jerusalem wow yeah what were they doing they were running on empty the tomb is empty Christ is risen this is amazing let's run let's get do something let's have let's have excitement at this this thought this amazing truth that actually our, our savior is real and he's alive and he was dead but now he's alive forevermore this is the, the, the word of the gospel this is the message uh, of, of Easter not some silly bunny somewhere no but uh, the empty tomb uh, praise the Lord for that you know we we keep going we don't walk by faith we by, by sight we walk by faith second uh, Corinthians 5 7 we don't uh, operate in our own strength but we operate in the strength of the Lord maybe we have no strength but then the joy of the Lord is our strength you know maybe we have in ourselves no capacity maybe we're weak we're foolish we're unable maybe we're disqualified by sin or think that we're disqualified by sin but then because of the risen Christ and because of the empty tomb we're able to run on empty wow the tomb is empty let's go let's keep on that let's stay with that we are crucified with Christ nevertheless we live yet not us but Christ lives in in us and the life that we now live in the flesh we live by faith of the Son of God who loves us and gave himself for us I know I misquoted that verse by pluralizing it but it doesn't matter you know it's like it, it, you know it's like it's to me in the original but I'm saying it's to us because it's to every one of us praise the Lord you know God it, God gives us these things and it's not our life it's no longer us that live we're running on empty we're we are nothing we're dead we're buried but Christ is risen and that's the point and we have a we have a living hope and we have a savior who's alive forevermore uh, Jim mentioned this morning um, the uh, first Corinthians 15 and he was uh, reading uh, the early part of the chapter and funnily enough I was planning to read the uh, a little bit later on verse 16 it says 
For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ is not raised, your faith is in vain. You are yet in your sins. Then they also that have fallen asleep in Christ are perished. And if in this life we only have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that sleep. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Wow. Think about that. If we only have hope in this life, we're of all people most miserable. It's funny, isn't it? You know how the world looks on us and we talk about Easter. And we talk about the dying of our Lord Jesus Christ. And people say, oh, you're miserable, you're talking about that. We want to talk about chocolate eggs. Well, you know what? That's because they have no understanding. They don't, they don't, there's no spirit there. And, and you know, for us, we have a hope. We have a saviour who's alive. That's better than a bunny and chocolate eggs. That's better than any of these other things that, that people, um, uh, fuss over but they look at us and they say oh you're the most miserable people no we're not because we have a hope because they don't understand the hope that we have because they don't understand the spiritual things and because they don't understand what is what god is doing they don't discern the hope that we have they can have no hope and yes i don't blame them for thinking miserable thoughts because you know what? They don't have any, any, anything to judge it by. But we have a living hope. And as Adam died, sin came into the world and Adam died, death came in through him. So the Lord Jesus Christ came in, paid the price for sin, conquered death and brought resurrection into the world. So now we have the living hope of resurrection. And this is who we are. We are the people who say, hey, Jesus is risen. Christ is risen, hallelujah. With the people who say, hey, Jesus told us, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. And you know what? We look at the empty tomb and we say, hey, I can run on the strength of that. I can go in the power of that. I can act on the strength of that. The power of the empty tomb. The power of the empty tomb keeps us going keeps us running <laughs> yeah if that's the case then anything is possible if that is the case if Christ is risen anything is possible if you know I can be forgiven I can be a brand new crea creation I can, I can forgive my enemies I can forgive the unforgivable I can love people who are unlovable in the world's eyes. I can love myself, even though I know everything about myself, every failing, every sin, and every, every darkest thought. But because I know that Christ paid for me, and because I know that God loves me, I can have peace. As we heard this morning from Pastor Andrew Lannis, that's the point. That's the, the whole message of this Easter wow we run our lives on the empty tomb we run our decisions on the empty tomb we run our emotions on the empty tomb we run our, our intellect on the empty tomb we run our identity off the empty tomb so we're running on empty <laughs> on every cylinder running on empty running on the empty tomb <laughs> wow praise God you know, in, uh, in Matthew chapter 26, and we won't be so much longer tonight because we've had a big day already. Um, it says, um, Matthew 26, 27, it says, and he took the cup 
and gave thanks to the gave gave it to them saying drink ye all of it think about that for a minute drink ye all of it you know when we we uh, we take the cup we empty it just as the tomb is empty in a moment we're going to take communion together we're going to remember our Lord Jesus Christ Psalm 81 verse 10 it says open your mouth wide and I will fill it you know we, we don't have any words of our own but we can be filled Ephesians um, 518 says you know be not drunk with wine wherein is excess but be filled with the Holy Spirit and you know what that is the that is the life of the Christian isn't it yeah we run on empty but why do we run on empty because we have a cup that overflows and we have a God who fills us he pours his spirit into us he pours his life into us and every time we pour out to other people he fills us up again and it's like wow we're running on empty yeah but you know what we have a God who fills us and we have a God of the provision and we have a God whose life is in us and you know what when it's eternal life when it's abundant life when it's the life of Christ it doesn't fail and it keeps us going and we're running on empty praise the Lord we're running on empty uh, all of the time <laughs> wow and the Lord fills us with himself fills us with his life so well as we just looked at that verse it says as they were eating Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said take eat this is my body so let's do that now if you at home have this um, that's fine we're going to have it here as well we have a, a, a piece of, of the bread broken bread this is unleavened but you know what um, just as Jesus took it and break it one whole one big they had the big round matzo bread um, and they what did they, they do? He broke it into pieces so that everyone who was there could take up the same bread. Community together. Unfortunately, because of the restrictions, we're not able to do that at the moment. We want to be wise, we want to be safe, but we want to be spiritual. And we want to have fellowship. And we want to commemorate this Easter because this Easter is the greatest thing that we're going to celebrate this year. So let's take the bread and let's remember as we thought about on Friday the broken body of the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who laid down his life for us. Who came the Godhead. The Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and first and the last and yet the one who was who liveth but was dead he lives today he laid down his life for us let's just take a moment to pray and take the bread together Heavenly Father we thank you Lord Lord we are conscious this, this night of how completely unworthy we are to stand in your presence we are sinful we are, are, are born in sin we are conceived in sin we have a sin nature and we are sinners by intention by action by habit by everything that we've done and yet because you took the price and paid it because you went to the cross of Calvary laid down your life as the sacrificial lamb of God we can be free we can be forgiven we can be made whole 
Lord, we pray that you would bless this bread as a symbol of who you are and your body broken. Bless it to each one who is taking this at home, each one who watches this later, each one in the body of Christ, in the fellowship of communion of the saints worldwide, Lord. This Easter Sunday, as the whole world focuses on who you are, Lord. Bless this bread to us now. Heal us, forgive us, cleanse us, Lord. We bring everything to your feet. We bring it to the cross. We leave it there and we go away renewed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And he took the cup and gave thanks, gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Think about that for a moment. The blood of, of a new covenant, a new testament, a new deal, a new arrangement, a new relationship between God and man, something made brand new by the sacrificial blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, shed for many, shed for you, shed for me, shed for whosoever will. Shed for everyone, shed for sinners, shed even for the people who think they have no sin, shed for the self righteous who need to repent, shed for the, the, the unbelievers who will mock and despise, shed for everyone. But we can partake of this cup, we can drink it all, we can empty the cup today let's pray and let's take this cup together Heavenly Father we thank you Lord and we worship you that you shed your blood this day as we think of, of Easter we think of uh, the, the cross on Good Friday and the blood that was poured out but we thank you Lord that the blood was on the mercy seat as a fulfilment of the law as a fulfillment of prophecy as a fulfillment of the plan of God and that atonement was made in full for us by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ we thank you Lord for this cup as a symbol of it as a reminder of it and we pray that you bless this cup now as we take it together and as we drain it that the cup will be empty as the tomb is empty and that our lives will be filled with your spirit, with your life, filled with a God who forgives us and renews us. Thank you, Lord. We worship you and have blessed this cup as we take it together in fellowship. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. been here it's got dark outside um, it's good though for us to mark this time it's good for us to celebrate together this Easter day thank you again for all those that were out this morning those that took part those that shared thank you for those around the world that sent in messages and um, 
we just want to uh, join with you as well to, today in celebration of our Saviour the living God I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore God bless you you know let's just, let's just have one final prayer and then we'll sign off Heavenly Father we thank you Lord for the living God we thank you Lord for your covenant with mankind we thank you Lord that you came to forgive us you came to seal our, our, our ransom our pardon you came to make us brand new Lord we pray now if there's anyone watching anyone at all who has never trusted Jesus Christ as their saviour we pray that this would be the first day this first Easter when they understand what it really means this would be the first time when they say hey I need a saviour I need a God I need someone who's bigger than than I am I need something more than a chocolate egg that is hollow at the center but I need uh, I need my life to be able to run on the emptiness of the tomb and I need a savior who comes through and fills me and renews me forgives me heals me and Lord I invite you in I trust you, I love you, and I want to know you. Come into my heart tonight, we pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Um, it's been a great day to, to spend Easter uh, celebrating and focusing on our Lord Jesus Christ. So take care, God bless, speak to you soon, we'll be out on Wednesday online as well, hopefully we might even be back at home then if our internet is working again, um, uh, and in the meantime, God bless, uh, much love to you all and God loves you very deeply, bye bye.